Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, I really appreciate y'all coming out on the latest uh, public scoping meeting with regard to the city's uh, mobile food uh, dispensing vehicles regulations. I know y'all are busy. And like I said, we really appreciate you all coming out and we're going to try and, you know, go through the presentation rather briefly. I think probably the most beneficial will be the question and answers uh, period. I'd like to make some introductions here from the city attorney's office, city attorney uh, Marshall Seagull George, and from the fire marshal's office, Lisa Nadeau is here to answer questions about fire safety and related requirements. <clears throat> uh, I see some familiar faces in the crowd. You all may have seen portions of this uh, presentation before. Uh, I guess we do recycle here sometimes. Uh, I've kind of changed it up a little bit. Hopefully we get the clicker to, to work okay. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to talk about past meetings and future actions. Uh, the first com uh, commission workshop we had on this was in September. We had a public scoping meeting at the direction from the city commission on the 10th of November. December 15th, there was another public hearing, planning and zoning board. Uh, finally, there was the first read for ordinance 03 dash 2022 uh, for the city commission on the 18th. At that meeting, they took no action other than to direct staff to revisit the uh, ordinance and conduct yet another public scoping meeting. Uh, future events is this is to be advanced to the city commission uh, by March of 20 of 22. Okay, uh, this is going to have a spoiler alert. We have made some changes. This, these regulations through this whole process, thank you, have evolved. We've made some changes or are going to propose to make changes to the latest and greatest edition that you all provided with. These changes were not included in that edition. The first change is going to be that there was a five acre threshold per food truck. That is going to be eliminated and is going to be controlled by available parking. For example, if there's enough available parking at one site to accommodate two food trucks, then that will, two food trucks would be allowed at that site. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> The other thing is seating. There, there was a desire for more seating at, it, at a facility than just one parking place. Okay. The rationale for limiting the amount of parking in a parking lot is for safety purposes. You know, it's, I'm not sure how safe it is to commingle the public, pedestrians and so forth, seated in a parking facility that's really made, it's a utilitarian entity made to support the, the parking and traveling of automobiles. So we're gonna ch change that to available to two spaces. Again, if those spaces are available to support the use in added spaces, but we're gonna require those spaces be roped off uh, or otherwise demarcated so that people in cars know that, you know, this is earmarked for some other use besides parking. <clears throat> uh, finally, we are looking at changing the available or expanding the available options from existing houses of worship type of uses C1, C2, and C3 properties with existing uses to also include properties that are zoned business plan unit development and an industrial plan unit development. Again, just kind of cutting to the chase, you know, what's changed since the meeting on the 18th. 
<clears throat> moving, along, moving along here, uh, just an overview, just going to define mobile food dispensing vehicles. It's predicated heavily on state of Florida definitions. Uh, it, these regulations obviously regulate the operation of mobile food dispensing vehicle activities within uh, city limits. This is going to be a change to Chapter 22. Uh, businesses within the city's code, we're going to eliminate a section of that. Going to include location standards, safety parameters, exemptions, and enforcement. Uh, <clears throat> proposed regulations include documentation of the required licenses, including the Department of Business and Professional Regulation requirements, a fire safety inspection report, uh, and there's also going to be requirement for a notarized authorization for owner. This is important for liability purposes. <clears throat> Also, there is going to be a site plan requirement to depict where the food truck will be located and any ancillary seating that may be associated with it. This is not intended to be an elaborate site plan requirement and can be an aerial photo at scale downloaded from the internet. Uh, let's delve a little bit deeper into the location standards. Uh, existing active commercial use in a C1, C2, or C3. I draw your attention to the last bullet part, uh, point, which is update. We're going to be looking at also allowing them within BPUD, business plan unit development, and industrial plan unit development areas. Uh, vacant, undeveloped lots or non active commercial uses are not eligible. Uh, Commercially zoned properties used principally for residential uses are not eligible. And again, actively used and developed houses of worship, regardless of zoning classifications, will be eligible. <clears throat> Parking standards. The dispensing vehicles must be placed on a paved surface only. Uh, shall not be located with any public right-of-way, uh, may not be located uh, at elig eligible facilities where parking is not adequate to serve the business facility as per the Land Development Code, may not occupy or obstruct, impede access to any handicapped parking stalls, and again, mobile vehicle dispensing vehicles may set up chairs and tables within no more than two parking spaces if available. Uh, spaces need to be demarcated and otherwise roped off to, to, to differentiate them from active parking and drive aisle areas. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about fire regulations. Again, kind of a 30,000 foot view, uh, shall, not be low, not, shall not be less than 10 feet from all buildings, vehicles, and combustible materials. Access to fire lanes must, must be maintained, including access to fire de prevention devices. LP gas generator storage and use shall be consistent with the Flo Florida Fire Prevention Code. And the location or operation of mobile food dispensing vehicles uh, inconsistent with code provisions shall be enforced as per city code. Hazardous materials or unsafe conditions or situations that produce excess noise, vibration, electronic interference, excess heat or glare uh, will not be allowed. Noise levels from gensets or generators must not exceed manufacturer specifications. <clears throat> We have an, an exemption here for uh, businesses with 100 or more full-time equivalent employees. Uh, hours of operations are limited between 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. And 
the number of food trucks per site will be uh, controlled by sp site specific conditions, including the number of parking areas available on the site. <clears throat> Advertising is limited to identifying copy depicted on a single uh, vehicle. No signs, banners, flags, sandwich boards, or similar will be allowed in any city right away or on private property. <clears throat> in no cases shall people hold signs, merchandise, or attempt to advertise mobile food dispensing vehicle within a public right of way. And no attention getting devices such uh, beyond normal illumination, music, noise, uh, shining lights, or anything of the sort uh, are allowed. <clears throat> Let's talk about exemptions. There's been some confusion about mobile food dispensing regulations and special events. These regulations are in, intended to regulate day-to-day -day food truck operations. A special event permit applied and obtained through the city of Daltona will be exempt from these regulations. Uh, finally, enforcement. The any food truck operating in non-compliance will be required to cease all operations and leave the location, and refusal to comply will result in a citation of $500, and the responsibility of that will fall under the underlying landowner. <clears throat> okay. Question and answer period. I'm sure you all have lots of questions on this, uh, so that we, this is being taped and will be shown on the city's closed circuit TV. So if we have questions, we step to the mic. Uh, I think that would be helpful so everybody's on the record, so to speak. And, you know, we can go ahead and move forward with the questions. <clears throat> Are there any questions about this, these regulations? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. I'm Pastor Caroline Shine, and I'm pastor of Greater Faith AME Church on the corner of Deltona and Enterprise. And and I noticed you did have a picture of our parking lot on your presentation. So I really want to uh, make some confirmations on what I think that you said. And <clears throat> first of all, are we going to get a copy? A written copy of either the presentation or, or your proposed before the March twenty uh, first. Yes, we date. can send that out after we after we make the language changes to memorialize the changes that we've discussed here. Okay, okay, and and I understood you to say that the houses of worship are excluded from this this ordinance. They they will be eligible to host a food truck operation or operations uh -huh. consistent with the codes and requirements of these regulations. Assuming that's a day-to-day -day type of operation, mm -hmm. if it's a special event, it'll be exempt, and how, those, how that special event is managed will be handled through the review of the special event. Okay, so special event would need a special event permit, but otherwise, day-to-day, -day, there's no permit on There the is no special event permits required for day-to-day -day operations. There, there, I'm sorry, there, there is no special okay. event permit required for, you know, day-to-day -day operations that is consistent with the city's regulations. Okay. I also wanted to confirm that as long as they got the available parking space, as you uh, probably already see from that photo that we do, uh, but we're not at the church every day. So uh, I noticed you said rope off an area. Uh, how, if the whole area is available, does it need to be roped off? It would, the seating would be, just the seating area needs to be roped the off. The seating area. Just the seating area, not the food truck operation itself. Okay, thank you very much. I was a little confused on that one. Okay, I do want to confirm that the site plan you said they could just get it off the internet because it, it does not need to be sealed or anything by an engineer or anything of that nature. No, ma'am. All it needs to be is at scale. 
and hopefully, you know, at a scale that we can determine exactly, you know, where the food truck's gonna be located on site and any seating or other ancillary type of activity. Who provides the site plan? That is a requirement of the applicant. The food truck provider would, would be the most logical entity to okay. provide that, that information. Okay, and, and lastly, I'm trying to find out why the, the food truck would not be accountable for whatever its non-compliances are rather than the landowner. Why, why if the food truck is in non-compliance, why would the landowner be responsible? The reason for that is because the landowner would be giving permission for the food truck operator to operate on their property. Mm -hmm. And code enforcement, it always works under the premise that the a landowner is responsible for what goes on on their land. Okay, uh, and another question. I'm sorry to ask all these questions, no but this is my first time coming to this particular meeting. Okay, uh, uh, does the city give warnings before citation uh, as a landowner I, you know there's something that you're you got to cite for and I don't even know that you're looking at it is there some is there some way you would let us know in advance before you make the citation they they have the ability to pack up and leave oh Okay. before a citation is, is, is issued, and that's up to the discretion of the individual code compliance officer. Okay, so, so uh, if, you, if you were to come and you found the, the, uh, the vehicle in non-compliance, you would tell them you are in non-compliance, and unless you leave right now, we're gonna cite the land on, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay. I could imagine that would be an appropriate outcome. <clears throat> Okay, well, that's all my questions for now. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> my name's Lisa Hager. I'm from the Deltona United Church of Christ. Um, one of my questions is, if, I, if there's two food trucks at the church, <clears throat> Am I allowed to have like one vendor or is that vendor consisted along with the food truck as the two party? The <coughs> street vending? Yes. Is not part of this code. This only involves mobile food dispensing vehicles. And that street vendor would fall under chapter 22. And I would imagine that there may be issues with that independent of a special events permit. Okay, okay. And my other question is, our parking lot is fairly large. <clears throat> Why is it only two food trucks? Why can't we go to three as long as our parking lot is able to handle? Um, and be compliance with everyone? The, the, the way the code is proposed to be changed, there will be no limit to the food trucks only controlled by the amount of parking and uh, the other safety parameters that are associated with the proposed regulations. So in other words, if I've got the parking um, facility is large enough, I could have three there a day? Potentially, yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Yes, sir. My name is Benny Rodriguez. Um, I see you said something about advertising. Are we allowed to have flags out by the sidewalk stuck in the ground and then when we leave, we pull them out? No, no, sir. No flags or pennants or anything so like can. that are allowed. So there's no, no advertising except for what's on your truck? That's correct. Okay. Um, I had another question. I forgot what it was. And all right, I, yeah, I do have another question. Okay. All this ordinance stuff is does this come about come about because of the restaurant owners, or is it a, a money thing where hands want to be? Into, I'm just asking because I'm from New York, and usually when stuff like this happens, mm -hmm. it's because money needs to be exchanged and moved around. I'm just asking. 
Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, you want me? You want me to yeah, take that one? Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it's not about money. We're not charging for any of this. We're not even charging for a business tax receipt for operating in the city. What happened is the state preempted and took over food trucks. So you all have to get a permit from the state. But then we have no way, we can't even ask for a license. So we have no way of knowing who's here, who's where they are, or any of those issues, or how we deal with safety issues and making sure that people can come out of a dollar store and not get hit by somebody else because a truck is there, a block, that, those kinds of things. So it's not a money thing, it's an attempt to just deal with a city and deal with traffic and parking and where, you know, everything will fit together. So the, I've seen the emails where they said that we're looking to tax, we're not going to tax tax anybody. All we're going to do is require you to fill out the application. We're also requiring permission from the property owner. And then it's between you and the property owner. And, um, you know, so we, you know, we don't have our hands in at all. We just want to make sure that we can keep all of this safe. Right. And, you know, and everybody is working under the same rules. And the only way you can do that is do, you know, a regulation that says, and then the elected officials have to approve it. But they, ha you know, all it's doing is saying, okay, everybody here, these are the rules of engagement for everybody. Everybody will be treated the same. And I mean, we're not going to have anything to do or any information as to what you make or what you're serving or any of those kinds of things. We just want to know you're in a place where where there's sufficient parking and it's not affecting drive aisles, accesses. And then when you asked about the sign stuff, we have a pretty restrict, those kinds of signs are pretty restrictive and we get a lot of complaints about those kinds of signs. Mm -hmm. Sorry, even if you remove it when you leave? No, because you're basically in the right of way with okay. them. And, you know, so they're distracting. And, you know, the way it is today, we want everybody to pay attention where they're driving. Right. And we don't want them distracted in that way. So, um, you know, but we've even, you know, we, we're even going to recommend that we allow up to two parking spaces if there's enough parking for a truck to, as long as you, you um, control your perimeter. Right. You know, so again, nobody gets hit by a car, nobody backs in to a, when somebody eating food from your food truck and um, they're sitting at a bench. And, you know, so we're just, again, trying to keep everybody safe. And um, so, no, I, there's nobody's getting any, I mean, the city's not receiving any kind of revenue from it. And like, you know, like you said, safety, Miss Lisa, you know, she, she inspected my truck. Mm -hmm. And she made sure I had all my ducks in a row and papers. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only way someone can operate, I mean, if you guys are going to question is, if they have their paperwork, you, you, you guys are the ones that come and check out paperwork. Well, and you're talking about doing a sticker, aren't you, or something? So, she, you know, with her sticker, code enforcement will know that you have, you know, that fire has inspected it. And then beyond that, your permit comes from the state, not from us. And she won't approve us if we don't have that permit. Well, because we, yeah, but it's not us, it's the state law. And yeah, but so- I'll, But the question, if you have a permit, mm -hmm. you won't get past her if you don't have that permit. Well, if we know, I mean, that's, it's part of trying to keep track of everybody who's here and making sure everybody's in compliance with the state law and then with the fire marshal. Right. So it's just safety. But the fire marshal's not charging for that inspection, are you? No, they don't. Yeah. We're not charging for anything. No, no, no. That's yeah. not, no, but what I'm saying is when you say that you have to have your permits, 
you're not getting past her if you don't have those permits. So if mm -hmm. you don't get past her, you can't even be out there. No, I know, but unless, but again, unless we, everybody's out there every day looking all over, a lot of times we don't know who's out right. there. I understand. So that's why we want everybody to know about it. And, um, you know, so we can, you fill out the application, you get the fire um, marshal, and then you've got your permit from the state, and if you have an arrangement with the property owner, right. then you're yeah. good. I was, I was just trying to figure out why it was such a big, they made such a big ordeal, the city, about food trucks. It's like a restaurant. We I know. trying to make money. You know? I don't, and yeah. I, I was just concerned. I was like, is this something that they want? <clears throat> They want us, you know, to get no. the, I was just questioning. I mean, we basically city. copied Orange Cities for the most part because they have a regulation also. So, again, we're trying to be the, le the least intrusive no, no. to your business as we can be, but we still, it's a city, and, you know, you have to have rules, and, you know, and, and of course what we're trying to do is just make sure everybody knows what the rules are. And that's fair. Yeah. No, I was just, but I, I was just curious. Yeah. No, it's fine. That's why we're here. All right. Thank you. Mm hmm Yes, ma'am. Brandy White, Deltona. Um, I'll have a few things, but one thing I wanted to bring up because it was just stated again, you mentioned being treated equally, but I noticed you mentioned that um, the citation and the request to leave would actually be left to the discretion of code enforcement. That doesn't sound like it'd be very equal if it's left to discretion. So is that something you can go more into? We have the ability to ask somebody to leave. That's a possibility. If they refuse to leave, then the city has the ability to issue the citation. So then it's not left to discretion? It's an option. Well, there's a process in place. You know, I mean, we have a process. You know, ultimately, somebody can challenge you. We can go to the special magistrate. It's not like you just leave and, we, and you may never come here again or we'll be waiting for you. I mean, that's not it. It is just a process. <clears throat> exactly. Understand the process, but the, the question that came up was, would the landowner be notified before receiving a fine? The statement was they would be asked to leave first, but then the statement was the discretion would be to code enforcement as to how that would play out. So that leaves room for unequal treatment. Okay. The way it's written is, if there's a problem, and the way our code enforcement works, they try and talk to a property owner, if they can, to try and work it out. We've also had people who say, well, they may be at one of these uh, business plan unit developments, and the owner is a conglomerate and isn't around, and how do we get to them? Well, I mean, again, we will try and work with the food truck. It would only be if there was a situation where somebody didn't want to work with us, that leaves us with no alternative other than to ask them to leave and then try and work it out with between the food truck owner and the property owner. So uh, I don't, uh, to me that is, it's still a process and there is no desire to force that kind of, you know, extreme situation. So. Well, hey, how you doing today? Oh, I got a couple. Well, I just I got a question. Um, I got 17 citations last year between the food, my food trailer, and the church where we set up at. I got an agreement between the church and me, say that I, she signed my letter saying that as long as I have insurance, I got a two million dollar policy for me to be there. Me and her work that out. That's private property. I have the city of Deltona questioning why am I here coming back telling me he's sending code enforcement voicing complaints with nothing to give me in my hand. No, telling me to move, remove my bench. We get, my business got harassed all last year. My trailer got removed, got called wastage. The church can't store wastage. My trailer is not wastage. My trailer is a food trailer. Y'all, the city of Deltona practically yeah. ran me out of business, and then y'all say the city manager is supposed to host these meetings to get us down here and talk to us and work with us. That ain't what we felt. 
that ain't what I felt. That ain't what the church felt when I had to go out there and paint those, those white bricks on the sidewalk and I look and see every business is destroyed all on that corner. Then when I come down to see the hall and I make a complaint, then the next week y'all send people out to give citations to all the other businesses. Mm -hmm. What I see y'all doing is y'all taking one step, you're going to the city manager, he's going to the mayor saying, okay, we need to do a big cleanup. Then okay, she okay the big cleanup and the first place y'all land is 800 Delta on the Boulevard with 13 citations and give them to nobody else. Well, it sounds like... Y'all practically ran my business. Y'all practically ran my business under the ground. I well, thought I'm removing my trailer. I really, I'm on Channel 9 News right now, today. They came out mm -hmm. to interview me today. And I'm, this is sad. It's right. sad that my son had to see us be pushed out of business. Okay. I, it seems like, and I, th I think you spoke in front of the commissioners also, and it seems like you have a particular issue, and I'm sure we'd be willing to sit down and talk with you about it and find out if we can resolve it. That's all I know to tell you, because it's not the food truck regulation that is your issue. Ma'am, I understand that. I respect all that. All I want to do is be left alone. I got insurance on my trailer. Me and her have an agreement. I get inspections. I got... I had every fire marshal from Sanford to Clearmont to D-Land on my trailer. I have a $100,000 trailer. It wasn't made in my backyard. It was made by one of the best food trailers, one fat frog. I got gas certifications all over. Y'all didn't make me do that. I do that because I care about my customs. I care about my family. We on that trailer. But what I do care about is code enforcement, sitting in the parking lot, harassing us, watching my business, my wife being scared. That's what I care about. And I, would, I don't care about none I'm of the rules y'all making. I don't okay. care. I care about the agreement me and her made. Y'all went against everything okay. I did with the church. I understand. And, and you try to drive a wedge between us saying that you want to view over the property over the top. You want a ladder from her saying I got permission to beat her. That's private property. That's something that me and her already worked out. Mm -hmm. This is something just a this, this is, I don't see why it's so important. You want to come and voice your opinion about me opening my business, about me running my business. I don't come up here and voice my opinion about the way y'all run City Hall. I don't do that, and I feel like that's not right. I don't care about an ordinance. Y'all can create whatever ordinance y'all want, but I do care about being harassed by code enforcement. When you bring another young young lady up to my business and you're training her and showing her how to put people out of business, that's what I care about. I care about you bringing another code enforcement, bringing a young lady saying she goes to school with my son at Stetson. They go to school together, and you telling me I have to remove a bench that's for my customers and me and my wife, and you saying I have to remove it, and then I'm telling you, give me something to say I have to remove it, and you have nothing to give me. And This and is what y'all training, y'all showing the people that's coming behind. And, and now sir, you saying, oh, we got to answer the sir, code enforcement about being on a property? I can, that's I, not right. None all I can right. tell you is, if you None will right. leave your information... I'm more than willing to sit down with you. I'm sure Ron's willing to sit down with you yeah, and I'm see if. Well, I mean, we didn't he, get an email, we didn't get a call. you we have to. Me, all those okay. We're trying to say we'll work with you, and yeah, that's I, all I can I, do. I lost half of my customers. I can't. Training, but I can't do I anything. Work with me, I do almost okay. All right. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I'm with him. You guys make us feel like we're in a gated community. This ain't about our houses. This is about our businesses. If you want to get into details about parking and cars blocking the, the roadways and all, go down to McDonald's. The line's way out on the, on the service road. Don't pick on just us. Get everybody. Everywhere you go, you can't get onto the lot because the, the drive through line. Why? Because of COVID. Nobody has any employees. Bull crap. Yes, sir. So I have a question about the proposed ordinance. Um, I actually live in where, where this church is, and then across the street, there's another food truck that sets up. It's in a relatively small parking lot. There's another food truck on Providence that usually sets up on the grass uh, where you can pull off on a side street. Like, those are the food truck options that are local to me, right, and a lot of people who live in that southeast part of Deltona. Um, so under this ordinance, right, when, he, when we send the site plans in, especially for the one across the street, because their parking lot's a little bit bigger, right? Right. Like, I, I'm, I'm in and out of there. I get my takeout for lunch. Like, are you going to say, wait a minute, this parking lot is too small? And then my follow-up question for you is, if so, where do you propose that they go to still serve my community? The size of the parking lot could dictate the ability to operate a food truck out of it. If it's too small or the site's under-parked, it would not be eligible for food truck operation. 
See, and my opinion is, is that the city needs to kind of back off until they make some changes and provide the spaces for either a brick and mortar business or these food trucks to continue to operate because we don't, when you have almost 90,000 people that live here and like four or five roads that cross the interstate to go to Orange City or to the places where these establishments are, it doesn't scale. We're all stuck in traffic. I, I would rather go get food right on Deltona Boulevard than to go any further. It would just add so much time to the to the ordeal to make it not work. Yeah, again, those those parking ratios are established by the city's zoning regulations and that would be the basis for determining adequate parking. Gotcha, so pr pretty much because they, they, the bigger parking lot, I guess the food truck was ran out of, I'm talking about the bigger plaza on Deltona Boulevard. There right. was a food truck there. There's not one there anymore. So it seems like the only other places around the neighborhood <laughs> They're obviously much smaller, so like if, if that's a, if that's what dictates it, then you, you just took our food trucks away from us. So. Yes, yeah, some some of those sites may be they very well be underparked and not eligible for food truck operation. Gotcha. <clears throat> I'll, I'll come back to you. <clears throat> My name's Alex. I own the Grateful Cow food truck. Just a question on the parking. How are we going to know what the parking ratio is and who determines that? I mean, if we're going to a certain place, the person that's running the business day-to-day -day operations is going to know how often they're at capacity and how many people they're going to have in their store at one time and how many parking spaces they actually ever use. Is what, this, what? this is going to be a thing on, this is how big it is and you need 15 parking spaces and that's it? Yeah, it's based on the square footage and the use of the facility there. And then how do we figure out that? As a that, food truck owner, I want to go to Advanced Auto Parts, mm -hmm. I jump through the hoops and find this property owner who lives in Canada. What about the parking? Can I get to the parking number and figure that out before easy, I even Yeah, very have to do easily. All that? You can go to municode.com and look at the city's regulations, and it's in Chapter 110, uh, Unico? 828. Municode.com? Yeah, municode.com. Or you can call and ask. Okay. You know, I that's probably the easiest thing to do. The biggest problem with that is, you know, the city isn't offering a lot of, it's just offering up rules to push push us away from the spots that we know to. And I, the only thing you're offering up is, oh, we're going to do food truck nights at City Hall and West Crowell Park or whatever. But we go where we go because we know that that's where we're going to be seen. <clears throat> City Hall, you're parking behind City Hall. People driving by, they're not seeing all these food trucks back here. They're not getting enough advertising out of the city. I mean, I saw a piece of paper that said foods and tunes. I've talked to a couple of the food trucks that have been here. Not successful. Whether you're putting too many, not putting enough advertising, maybe this is just a bad spot. It's just a bad spot for people in the neighborhoods to come all the way to City Hall from across the street. So and that's some I know you're saying that we're offering these things up, but it doesn't seem like it's a great offer if it's like, the, this is the only place we're gonna allow it. Yeah, that, that was some of the rationale between uh, changing the venues to other city uh, sites like West Crowell Park, I understand that was very well received. Yeah, probably that, a lot you know, of that, And the city, by the way, isn't charging for the use of that. All right, that's cool. <clears throat> by the way, there is a sign-in sheet in the back, and if you all would sign in with your email address so we can, you know, keep in contact with you, I'd appreciate it. If you need more paper, just let me know. Any other, <coughs> sir, did you have another question? Yeah. Yes, sir. I wanted to um, speak on, <coughs> where that young lady at? <coughs> on her, what she said mm -hmm. and what you said. You said it's going to be based on the code enforcement. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be determined up to him. Suppose we come across one that just be like, you know what, we ain't thinking about this. I'm just going to write you the citation. Because you do come across law enforcement. Not everybody's nice like Miss Lisa. You know, Miss Lisa was polite and nice. She, she you know. That's a but suppose we, come across, nature, huh? <laughs> suppose we come across somebody that comes to us and be like, you know what, you're in violation, and just write us up without giving us the option to leave first. What happens then? This Are they going to wear cams? 
This Are you going to have them win cams? This is the way the code is proposed to be written with regard to enforcement. Mobile food dispensing vehicles operating in non-compliance of any of the provisions of this section will be required to immediately cease all operations and leave the location. Okay? If there's a refusal to comply with the cease and desist determination of a city code compliance officer, then a citation in the amount of no less than $500 per infraction will be issued to the landowner, and the city will bring forward a code compliance case against the underlying landowner. And state of us. And it's going to be based on. With the intent of collecting of the fine in accordance with city code compliance procedure. That's right, but the, then you uh, also said it's going to be. It left depends to on the, the history of, the, of this particular site. So how about and if you so come forth. across a code enforcement person that was upset for the day and come to you and he wants to take it out on you and just give you the summons and not give you a chance. Then, you then, then, you, like then the landowner has the ability to appeal to the code compliance officer. The city doesn't make money off code compliance operations. Those those don't cover the cost of any code compliance operations. I, I have a question. Yes, sir. So if you're asked to can, can you come up to the mic, sir? My name is Fernando. I live here in Deltona. Um, so, question: So, if um, if you if the code enforcer uh, comes out and fires you in violation and asks you to leave, example, um, how much time do you have? In, you know, to leave, to shut down, because there's a process when you're shutting down. So let's say you know you have to cool down your oil. You have to you know uh, you know put the oil away, there, there's a process. So, you, so the question is, how long do you have once, you know, they tell you that you have to, you know? Uh, I believe that you would be given time. However, if you're still serving customers, that could trip the threshold for a violation. So you, know, you, so you would have to stop? Yeah, stop serving immediately. customers and you're done. Yep. Okay. And then you can power down and do what you need to do. Gotcha. Um, the other question, um, you have uh, hours from from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Yep. And, and that's every day, Monday through Sunday. That's correct. Yes, sir. Gotcha. And um, the other thing, uh, uh, you said something about uh, noise. Mm -hmm. uh, regulation uh, generators. Uh, so, so some of us have music in the area. Uh, how was M music would not be allowed? But a gen set, it can operate just as long as it's within the specifications of the manufacturer for the decibels admitted. A gen set. Uh, a generator. A generator. Sorry. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. By the way, this is the city manager, acting city manager, city of Deltona, John Peters. Uh, definition of a f mobile food dispensing vehicle is a vehicle that is a public food service establishment and is self-propelled or otherwise movable from place to place and includes self-contained utilities, including but not limited to gas, water, electricity, or liquid, or liquid waste disposal, sometimes referred to as a food truck or trailer or food cart, and otherwise regulated by the Department of Business and Professional Regulation, requiring a mobile food vendor license subject to Florida's statute section 509.102, and in compliance with section 22-120, excuse me, 22-191 of the city code, F mobile food dispensing vehicles are stationary for periods greater than 10 minutes while foodstuffs are prepared, served, and are sold. M a mobile food dispensing vehicle does not include roving vehicles like an ice cream truck that periodically travel through residential neighborhoods selling prepared, pre-prepared or pre-packaged food items or a street peddler of unprepared foodstuffs, makeshift standalone restaurants or 
buffets such as a food tent or mobile food vendor selling anything other than foodstuffs, food or foodstuffs. Yes, ma'am. Got a few follow-up questions. Um, I'm particularly uh, concerned about, you said no less than $500. Correct. So there's no ceiling. That would be a decision up to the special magistrate to make. And what was the methodology for coming up with $500, and how does that compare with other? Typically, that's your typical fine for parking violations in the city. $500 yeah, the maximum. for a parking fine? Yeah, the maximum. Okay, it's, it's a maximum. Yeah. But you're giving me this as a minimum. That's correct. Yeah. Again, I, and that would be adjudicated through the special magistrate process. Okay, now I'm going to... I have a hard I have a hard time with that one. Okay. Right. I, I'm a disagree that um, that uh, something with no ceiling be put into a rule um, for for that. And then also I, I heard one of the gentlemen uh, earlier ask about the parking requirements, the ratio, and not everybody is. Uh, very familiar with codes. Why couldn't uh, some more explanation or some more verbiage be put into that language so the person can know exactly what the requirements are? We could put a reference to the city's parking requirements in the code. With an attachment? I'm sure we could probably look at something like that, but I think it would be more streamlined just to have you know, the code referenced, you know, 110-828. Oh, okay, because uh, uh, people work with laws and codes and that can spew them off all the time, but you're asking uh, these folks to, in the field, be that familiar with it. I, I, my request would be to make it so it'll be a little bit more under okay. understandable to them. And, and I want to be on the record that I'm disagreeing with the minimum with no ceiling. Okay. Good afternoon. Yes, ma'am. My name is Maria, and of course, I'm a food truck owner. <clears throat> I want to find out how all this new ordinance begin? What was the purpose or what it originated? You want me to do that, Ron? If you, if, if Basically, the state, it came because the state passed a state law from the legislature preempting any governments with regards to determining and only specified food trucks, that's it. That, you know, that a local government could, could not get involved. And I've got, I don't know that we have, you know, Ron and I, we both have the state law here with us, but I don't think we have any way to copy it. Um, but anyway, so at that point, we couldn't, you know, we could not do anything. I mean, we could have a hundred food trucks and you're all getting your licenses from the state, but we don't know who you are, where you are, or anything else. But if we come and pay our city tax. You won't, and, you and, don't. And well, we do when we start, right? No. I mean, I have a business tax from here, and, and you, I pay every year. And you shouldn't be, because the state said we can't charge you that. I just pay mine a few— a couple, Well, stop you know? paying it, because— Yeah, and then we get behind that, and no, it's another thing. No, the law <laughs> says, the state says yes, we may not charge you that. Yes, also the law says, if I'm not mistaken, governor also issued that we were not supposed to be regulated. <clears throat> Only with regards to zoning, and that is what this is. Okay, fine. We're going to regulate the food trucks, and you are guys going to allow us to park in center areas, and we're going to distribute our food to center areas. We are trying to be more careful on how we have our customers, where they park, because we want to make sure that we don't block driveways, we don't block any of that. 
That's yeah. good. How will you mm -hmm. feel more comfortable? You're gonna go to his food truck, order your food, you're able to see how clean or how dirty that food truck is. You get your food and that's it. Versus, oh, so-and-so is selling empanadas in the Facebook thing. You make a call, oh, I give them to you in the CVS Plaza. Somebody's selling menudo. But we don't regulate that. You, well, so many will say that they're under the Kaddish cheese law. Who regulates that? Under the what law? The Kaddish The, the what? cottage law. The whole oh, occupation. The cottage law is where they can do their uh, cooking, baking, or whatever at home. The home occupation is what she's referring to. Okay. Yeah, home but I mean, occupation. who regulates that? I mean, they supposed to get a license. It's not Isn't honest. it better for you guys or every customer? I mean, me as a customer, I will feel better, and I'm gonna be honest. I mean, I not even do my business inside Deltona. <coughs> I'm licensed through Deltona because my property is Deltona. Mm -hmm. I don't do business here because I want to be able to have my customers sit down at a table. And we're all going to allow that in yeah. Deltona. And then again, you're only going to have two parking spaces for the yes. customers. Yes, because... My food, my food takes 15 to 20 minutes. We f make the food as they order. It's not prepared. Mm -hmm. It's not pre-cooked. You know? I mean, if you go and order a burrito from me, I still have to grill the meat. But you didn't order only steak, you also ordered chicken. So I have two, three different meats mm -hmm. that I have to be grilling. If behind you is another customer and another customer, do I have to tell the third customer, please go and circle around until I have time for you? No. Wouldn't that be more danger for everybody for have somebody going around and around? I, but again, <laughs> well, no, I mean, I don't know how to answer that. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, is that? First of all, I want to applaud you. I've eaten uh, some of your trucks. Thank you. Good food, take your time. Thank you, I'll take my time. <laughs> truck is handled by the state and by the health department. The fire marshal is more about the site conditions, i.e. where your propane tanks are, your susceptibility to flammable material, and that type of thing. We, we are strictly concerned, and the question was asked earlier, where did it come from? Um, partly it was the state law, but we had a commission meeting with several commissioners under their own time brought up some situations around town. Um, I have seen, because I go around town quite a bit, I actually saw a food truck in a grass area on the side of Allen. There was no obvious parking area nearby. Someone stopped in Allen, got out of their car, walked across the sidewalk, <coughs> made their purchase, and came back and got back in their car and drove off. In the meantime, people were swerving to get around I've seen, and I've almost got in an accident, where there was a food truck at a church. It was in a blind curve, where the truck was parked in the parking lot. People were turning in and stopping, and the traffic was four or five deep out into the road. Uh, if the truck had just simply been further into the site, where people could get in and park and all that, it would have been fine. But, you know, what we're trying to do is create a safe environment. But we also, and Ron and I had this conversation along with Marshall, and it came to me. We understand that there, this is different. That's why we have gone the extra mile to set up, like, wet crowd. We had it here for a while. We're talking about doing it in the center. Um, where we take care of the site conditions. You don't have to worry about getting the site permit. You know, we check with our insurance. Um, always, we're just trying to provide that safe place where you all go do a business. You don't have to worry about you know, a site plan, anything like that. We're not asking for a penny from it. Um, we just want to provide a safe place for you all to go. That was modeled after one of 
if you ought to go down to Orlando, no, you can go under I-4, they have a food truck park. And that was one of the things that Ron and I talked about. And we felt like the easy way to accomplish that was to use some of our city facilities to encourage it. The next step are going to be things like we have concession stands at a lot of our parks. The agreements for those concession stands are expiring. They're usually with athletic groups. We're going to put it out for RFP so that you know, if you wanted to take over a uh, concession stand, that you would pay us a nominal rent or whatever. You could put your truck up inside and use the concession stand as part of your normal operation. Um, and so we're trying to do things outside the box to assist you all. Um, you know, we're getting fixated on the fact that it's a regulation. Um, the other thing that I would point out is, you know, I've heard a lot of people express concern about having to get into property owner's permission. We had a situation where the property owner was unaware of something going on and almost lost their insurance over. And, you know, I, the example I would use to you, sir, would be, if I came up and just borrowed your food truck and drove off and you know, started selling food in it, you would have a problem with that because that's your food truck. Same thing with the property owner. You know, a normal property owner, you know, they, they may want to work with you, and that's wonderful. But you know, some property owners don't. And, you know, just you being able to pull up on their lot and use it, uh, you know, A, they may not want it, and B, it could cause some potential liability problems for them. So uh, we, we tried to craft an ordinance that was respectful of your operation. That's why we're doing the extra things to help. Um, emphasis on at no charge. Um, and we also want to make the property owners comfortable that something that goes there will be you know, legal and won't put them in a legal liability and potential insurance problems. So um, we tried to put an ordinance together that was mindful of everything. The last thing I want to do is get into code compliance issues and all that. What we want to do is create a safe working environment for our residents and for you all. And um, like I said, come on out to West Crowd. If it gets full, then we'll go to Dewey Foster. Um, and we got facilities that can handle, and we're taking care of the event from that. So that they are taken care of. So if you come to West Crowd, you can set up, and we're good to go. Key element in that is the fire marshal's office goes out on the site. <coughs> we determine where the trucks can be to keep proper distance and all that. So. I know it's not popular when you know, government changes regulations, but uh, we were very mindful of the impact on everybody, and we have gone out of our way to try to, and Ron's even made changes in the last few days to make it more powerful, because one of the questions that came from the commissioners was, you know, why just two if you had more than five acres? And if you had 100 acres, you limited to two. Um, and it was a valid point, and uh, Ron made say adjustment. So um, we're trying hard. Um, we wanted to hear you, um, and that's why I'm here. I wanted to hear it also. Um, so, you know, if you have specific concerns, you can call Ron, you can call my office. Um, I will call you back. I'll take the call right then if I'm available. Um, and let's talk about it. Uh, but I think when you all see what we're doing and experience it, you will find that this is probably about as good a deal as you're going to get anywhere. And because uh, I know one city has regulations very similar, but they don't offer the alternative of giving you a site, city owned, to have a regular thing. So what I, my goal was to have two nights a week where you all could go to a city facility and set up. And you know, one of the feedback I'd like to get from you all is which night is best for you all. Would you uh, have a limit on the on those type of events? To how many trucks can they be there? Pardon me? Would they have a limit on how many trucks can be here? Um, initially, at West Crawl, I'm sure there's a limit. Now, if it began to be that you know, it's so popular, then we might shift it over to Dewey Box to where we have more room. <laughs> um, you know, we had that option. I mean, it's all 
be kind of like in Sanford. In Sanford, that's why they have the monthly food, food trucks. You're, you're saying my and, fault there. Yeah, I, I'm aware of Sanford. But you know, we have um, the center has a huge parking lot. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what kind of event will fill that parking lot out there. But, um, but you know, there's a significant parking area at the, at the center. That's an option. Dewey Boxer, West Crowd, probably about three biggest facilities uh, for doing this type of thing. So we want to work with you all and make you all successful. But honestly, you know, what I would love to say, especially you, ma'am, um, I'd like to see you do so well that you end up with a brick and mortar restaurant so I can come in and sit down and eat next time. Working on that. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I understand. What can you're you saying. can you come to the mic, please? Yeah, I understand what you're saying about the you know having facilities for everybody to go to. But truthfully, how many owners are here of property that that food trucks can go to? I'm the church. Then we have two. So these two are, are willing That's to sign that. Either, but I would leave and, and stop. Well, they're they're willing to sign something for food trucks for that they can be there. But there's a limit to the food trucks. There's a limit at West Crowell. There's a limit at Dewey Boaster. How many food trucks owners do we have? I see more and more food trucks coming every day in Deltona. So two days a week, one day a week. How many? How much business are, is each and every individual food truck owner going to get? We can't but, live like that. But let me ask a question. We need five days at least. How many people, if we had a larger facility, how many people would utilize this with uh, burning their food truck? If it was five days a week? Yeah. 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 But, yeah. I honestly, I have a food truck, but do you want to know how often I've had it out in the past year because I see so many people and there's so much problems? Mm -hmm. One time. I've had that one time. I've become but, so door dashing. That's why I asked the question. Because if, if there's that much interest, then we'll see what we can do. Because, you know, if you know you got a regular spot, um, you know, I know one of the things is what you see on part of we chose West Crow. If there's always people at West Crow. Here, you know, unless you get somebody leaving from work, um, you know, you're not going to probably, if the stuff is hidden, West Crow. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. This is about the time span from 8 to 10. Okay. I'm one of the few, maybe the only one that serves breakfast. And a lot of people on their way to I-4 come and get my pork roll, bacon, egg, and cheese, butter roll, coffee. And they need me there at 7 in the morning because they got to be to work by 8. And I get a lot of posts on face on face. They want me there at six. I'm like, no, that's just too early. But eight eight o'clock is like they 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 rather come to me than Dunkin' Donuts because they getting fresh eggs versus frozen eggs. You know, so the eight o'clock thing. I mean, y'all need to y'all can work with that and, and adjust it to maybe seven. Yes. You know. Can we, can we take a look at? Uh, tweaking that to where, you know, if it's not next to a residential area. It's actually in her church. At a specific site, we could get a six to six sure. time frame instead of an eight day. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's something we can work with. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, I make breakfast. That's, I'm, I'm in the daytime. I'm not at nighttime like everybody else. Sure. Well, I drive by the church at Tivoli and Providence. I'm going to get and egg and cheese. You know, somebody yeah, you popular there. As you're crafting this this ordinance, you know, keep in mind, you know, places like the center, they only serve a certain part of Deltona. You know, there's a lot of us that live in the bottom part of the city, and those parking lots. I mean, if you're going to limit, you pretty much the ordinance. The, I'm trying to think of the food trucks that set up around my house and the ones that I go to, and one of them parks in the grass in Enterprise. The other one, I, the parking lot has like five five or 
five or maybe a little bit more spots in it where the Jamaican truck is set up across from the church. She has a relatively small parking lot. Like, I'm hearing all these restrictions, and it's like, okay, we're going to do these city-hosted events. The closest place I've heard is Dewey Broster Park. And then even at that, like, it takes the randomness out of a food truck. Like, you're driving down the street. It's like, oh, I'm hungry. I don't have dinner. Perhaps here's a food truck. Let me just pull over and get something different tonight. So I, I get what you're trying to do here, but your regulation is going to really restrict where food trucks are set up around our part of the city. Um, so. Yeah, because... If you guys start setting up food trucks five days a week, that's going to hurt, especially, for instance, like us, because we, we do charge a small fee, and we understand that, but at the same time, you guys are free. So if you're going to be free for five, six days a week, we might as well just shut it down completely and just do once every two, three months on a Saturday for our special events. Well, and that's really not really fair for us either. Well, I do take it. Um, like in your particular situation at the church, if you go through the cycling process one time, you're done. As long as you stay in compliance with what your cycling says, you get to it one time. So, uh, for instance, if you wanted to have two food trucks, which is what you normally have, um, I've been trying to figure out if they park overnight just so they can have the spaces, but kidding aside, if you did a site plan where those two spaces are designated and it's approved, then as long as they stay in their designated area, they're good to go. Um, you know, we don't, they'll never be dealing with us again because um, you know, we can drive by and we can see other their designated spaces and drive on. Um, and so, that's the other thing it's important to realize that the site plan requirement can be like a cat to shine. Like, it's a one time thing. Uh, you do it one time, and uh, then you know you have a site plan to go for, you know, with specific locations and all that for the truck. When did that come about of, of doing a site plan? Yeah, the as far as the regulation. That was always in there. Yeah. See, I was never told about doing a one-time site plan for one or two food trucks. I was never told that. I was told I had to do it for special events, and I do one for every special event. He, he said, this ordinance is strictly on food trucks. Right. Now, in your particular case, you sometimes have vendors to sell other things. Only on special events right, right now, yeah. In those particular cases, because you got the other vendors, you would fall under an event permit. And I think while we have the event permit, we can have one event a month on a single permit. I believe so, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's if you, if you it's kind of a different permit, situation. Say, every third Wednesday of the month on one event permit for the year. Okay, so then you're telling me that I gotta have a special event program or event uh, permit for the pumpkin patch, and I'm not allowed to get another one for our food, our fall festival, the later on in the month, no. because that is two different <clears throat> events. Well, they wouldn't let me put it together. Yeah, I, I think I think we're kind of getting off. Uh, uh, yeah, this special events is a different situation. We're talking about day-to-day -day operation of mobile food dispensing vehicles. Special. Okay. Any other questions? Oh. <laughs> it's not so much as a question, it's just a comment to help put perspective on some of you guys that don't understand. You keep bringing up opening a brick and mortar. <clears throat> I, ran, I ran brick and mortars for 15 years. I opened a food truck for the joy of not being in one place at one time all the time, begging customers to come to my location, advertising, hoping that this gas station doesn't close and that takes away a percentage of my business. This grocery store doesn't close. Whatever happens, it's a big risk on both sides. So to ask for these broad regulations of the extra work of doing site plans for somewhere I might only be 
two, three times a month is, is the things that I'm looking at for issues for me. I don't want to be in the same place. My goal isn't to open a brick and mortar. It's, you start putting these rules on where I have to do all this stuff just to be somewhere all the time. I'm not trying to be at West Quail every week, every month, or anything. I, I want to do that. You're sucking, it's kind of just sucking the joy out of what the business is. It's a mobile food truck. We're meant to be mobile. I go to DeLand, I'm not forced with these issues. I go to Daytona, Ormond Beach, I can go to Bike Week. I have all these different regulations, but they're not bothering us on these things. Go to apartments. It's not these things. They're, they're always asking for all this extra stuff. It's left up to them. They know where their parking lot can take. They know where to park us. We have all of our insurances. We, we all get regulated thick and th I mean, I'm super part-time compared to a lot of these guys where I, I'm working three, four days a month. And I still get health inspected three times a year. <coughs> Fire inspections, all this stuff. So it's just like, more and more and more, the more we add to it, it's just like, why, why are we even doing this? It's not fun anymore. And to be always said, oh, you can only do a brick and mortar, that's not what I got into the business for. I could have done it, but I didn't, because I like being able to go to my customers and meet new customers and enjoy these types of things. So that's what this broad thing is, you're just you're kind of like, it's like regulated towards people who are trying to be open Monday through Friday, like you're regulating us like a restaurant. We're not a restaurant, mobile food, temporary, temporary spots. In our respect, in our respect to choice, and I didn't mean to offend you when I said, you know, I would like to see that somebody open a brick and mortar. No, I, I just, I, that's why I keep coming back to these things. It's like last time I came, people were saying, we don't get health inspected. That's false. <laughs> you know what I mean? They were asking like, the city had to regulate us for all these things. No, we're regulated, we're, we're doing it. I mean, this isn't like your TO or your auntie who just grabbed a bunch of crack pots and threw it in the back of their truck and said, let's open up a food truck. These are sophisticated kitchens on wheels. We had to do a site plan to get it built before I could even put money on it to get built, had to be approved for these things. So the safety is there. It's our livelihoods, it's on the line. That's why we have all these insurances and things like that. So I'm just saying, broader picture to look at these types of things for the regulations. The extra hoops, it's just not fun. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Good evening, my name is Michelle. I'm not a food truck owner and I'm not a land owner. I am a food truck advocate. I support every food truck in Deltona on Fridays and Saturdays because I don't cook on the weekend. As far as that code enforcement portion, the first thing we do when we order our food is we pay for the food. So if code enforcement is telling them to leave and they gotta stop serving our food, what happens to the customer's money that was already paid to the vendors? I'm not. What'd you say? Yeah, I, but, I, Brian, yes. I think that this whole code thing got off wrong. I mean, I mean, if this passes, if something like this goes into place, Ron's in charge of the code officers. Nobody is gonna do something like that. Again, we're not looking to cause problems. So if there would be something so serious that something would be said, I, I can't imagine a situation where you wouldn't be allowed to serve whatever customers have paid and whatever cooking you had to do before you would leave. Oh, because he said that once court enforcement tell them that's it, they had to pack up and leave. But I've already paid for my food. So but I don't get my food and I don't get my money because he has to leave? Pack up doesn't mean you drop everything and I you did, get just, in and I drive did. away. I mean, again, we're going to, uh, we are trying, like the city manager said, we're trying to be reasonable. And it isn't any attempt to take the freedom of enjoyment of having a food truck away. It's still a city and there are traffic rules. And, you know, and we don't want people running into people eating food. And, you no, know, I understand we want, that. I just want yeah. to know about my, my money that I paid. No, so that would. 
would never happen. And if it did, I would pay you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My mother was from New Jersey. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, my name is Caroline Gregor, and I own one of the food trucks. Um, I just have one question, or better of uh, clarification. Um, let's say there's a lot of parking spots here that we can go to. They're big enough. Uh, one example is Lowe's. Mm -hmm. um, Lowe's has three, sometimes four, at different different times. Everybody just monitor each other, and they just make. The deal, one thing is the store manager allows the food truck there, but he won't sign a letter because it's a corporate owned. Anything that it has a big enough parking lot around the city is owned by corporation. And that is the problem. The corporation, you have to jump through all these hoops. As a general manager, because I work for Walmart, you have the discretion of the property and do and allow whoever you want to allow in there as long as you don't take it to the corporate. At that point, you're completely out of business because you'll be waiting for a letter from them from a month to three months. The thing is, some of them don't want to sign letters because of the thing you guys saying that it will be their responsibility. The liability, yeah. Why would it be their responsibility if I have insurance? I'm the one doing the wrong things. I'm the one, like, if I let somebody in my house to do a job, I want them to be licensed and insured. Because if something happens, it will be their responsibility. I will go under their insurance, under their liability, not mine. So that is the same thing. They don't want to get in trouble. We are the ones doing, if I do something wrong, it's me. It was just me. It's not the owner of the property. It's not the corporation. It's not Lowe's Inc. or Walmart Inc. or Advanced Auto Park or something like that. So my question is, in that situation, if I don't have a written letter stating that I can be there and it's notarized, nobody can be there. Yeah, the, the city can't authorize the use of private property without the, the, the property owner's permission. So what I'm saying is the general manager can say, yes, you guys can be there, so but do I still need that letter to be notarized saying that he said that it's okay? Because I doubt he's going to give me his license to put it in a notarized paper. Yeah, and that's the, the, the landowner would have to provide that, that authorization. You know, so, Ron, we could have an alternative where the food truck gives us copy, a copy of their liability. The problem is the deep pocket. Every, you know, if you're at Lowe's, then they're going to want to, you know, go after Lowe's mm -hmm. or like we're, they're the city's the deep pocket. And so the difficulty is, like the city manager said, we had an issue where some vendors were involved and it was a shopping center or whatever, but the owner didn't know and his insurance doesn't cover it. So as an example, and I'm like, you know, saying, God forbid, say your truck explodes and some people are hurt. They're going to go after Lowe's. They're going to go after you. And they're going to go after the city for allowing this to go on. And so we're just trying to, you know, try and get responsibility where we need to get it. But I don't, from a legal standpoint, I don't have a problem if you can't get uh, where you are, the, the, big, the big folks, to give you a letter. Um, uh, he probably wouldn't even allow us to call and say yes, because that would get him in trouble. But I guess the only alternative to that would be that you basically, in that permit, it's whatever, what are we calling it, an application or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, if we, if you gave us insurance information. And I think that would be a great idea, because like I said, I work, I work for Walmart too, mm -hmm. and we do it. Mm -hmm. We just want to help these people, like mm -hmm. vendors and things mm -hmm. like that, but it's on our responsibility. Yeah. We're going to be there. But the reality is, if, you know, if yeah. it blows, it, exactly. we're all in. Yeah. We're in, Lowe's is in, and you're in. 
I mean, that's the reality of it. It's just that we all have to be able to defend the, our responsibility from the city. We're supposed to be careful and make sure that, you know, the yeah. city and the taxpayers aren't going to have to pay more money or whatever. And, you know, so all I'm saying is the reality is when something horrible happens, everybody's in the soup. So we're just, um, you know, we were trying to come up with a way that we could show the city being responsible, like you have permission to be there, you have the, you know, the property owner understands that they may have liability, and, um, you know, but if this is an issue out there with the, the bigger places, then, I mean, we can offer, assuming everybody else is agreeable and the commission's agreeable, we could offer the ability for the food truck owner to put their insurance on the line. And I think and that then, will be amazing because that's why we carry insurance because we want to mm -hmm. be able to just back ourselves yes. and protect anybody or mm -hmm. whoever is around us. And I yeah. think that should be it. That sh we should be able mm -hmm. to, we pay for an insurance yes. and we'll be, should be responsible and for I whatever mean, happens. You know, I'm the lawyer, so I only give advice, but it'll be Ron and the city manager and then talking to the commission about it. But it is a possible alternative if it helps people get to where they're trying to get to. All right. Okay. Thank you. One thing is, um, I know you want to make it notarized so it makes it more legal or valid, but like I said, me as a manager at Walmart, I won't give my driver's license to somebody to notarize a letter. I will write you a letter, I put my signature on it and whatever, but I will notarize it because I don't feel comfortable giving my personal information to <coughs> him, for example. That, I mean, I'm just looking for somebody random because an artery is going to, I'm an artery too, so I know what I need, so I, I wouldn't feel. But let me just say this, notaries have to put a bond on that, you know, if you give them personal information and they can use it for the very reasons, you can go against their bond for damages. So, um, I do know that. Notaries are that way. Um, I don't know, I guess it's just about feeling comfortable. I mean, well, somebody. But that way, that will eliminate most of the areas with big parking lots around the city because they're all owned by corporations and we won't get that notarized letter. Just real quick to add to the 
because if you're willing to work with the notarization, that's the bigger problem for a lot of us food trucks. Legally, our insurance, our general liability insurance, you can take out a COI, which is an addition, additionally ins insured. And we do it every time, every time I go to Destination Daytona, I have to give them a copy of my $2 million policy that holds anything uh, my food truck does on their property is on me. So I would be willing to do that. You mean name the city as a named insurer? I'll do the city, whoever. and I would yeah. do Lowe's if I can't get the notarized permission, because they're not going to give it to me. I was the first one to park at Lowe's three and a half, four years ago, and I dealt with the, the store manager. He told me it's absolute hell to get through the corporate lawyers and stuff to get that permission. Probably. So if we could do this, this application, and I were to mm -hmm. pull, I would be more than willing to pull a certificate of uh, insured for the city of Deltona and for Lowe's, because then in there it says they can't go after Lowe's, they have to come after me. If I back my food truck into someone when I'm parking, simple accidents like that are covered. If my truck blows up, they come after me. That's why it's a $2 million policy for things like that, to help us go past that without having to get this notarized mm -hmm. permission. And it, would, it would certainly bypass all of that just to throw that out there. Let me ask a question. Are you saying that uh, you don't want to get Lowe's corporate permission? You can't get it. You can't get it. They're not going to give it to you half the time. I mean, I'm sorry, but to me, that is in you can't come up and load the property. Um, so, but I mean, that, that goes for anybody that's, that Beef O'Brady's isn't the property owner, but they have an insurance, so if Beef O'Brady's burns down, they don't come after the property owner. Hang on, you're, you're a the corporation, and you don't want to get somebody's permission to put a food truck on their property. That's their right. How can you and I... But they're, what they do is they don't want to be involved. They're telling their store managers. Tell me the legal basis in which you can park your truck on Lowe's Corporation property without their permission. General she just told you what happens. The general they pass that the general down to the managers. But the general manager doesn't have any property. They're giving them the permission. If you got right. parking Here's spots, go ahead and do it. We the shopping center example to be the property manager gave permission for people to be there. When the owner was notified of the notice of violation, he blew up because he said, my insurance doesn't cover that. He had no authority to give that permission. So, so one bad egg screws it up for the entire town, is what you're saying. But what I'm one person didn't do the right thing. I'm telling you the steps on how to get it right. Hang and on you're stuck on one thing. I'm telling you, this is how we do it in every other town. Every other town. All the, Harley Davidson. So you're saying you can never step on any property owner's rights, then? They're giving their rights to their store managers. Yeah, I, th I, th I, think it, I think at this I think at this juncture. Sir, the store manager is willing to Sir. give permission. Sir, let us let us yeah. look into it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand that, that this way. is a challenge to, to 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 get these types of permission and so forth from some of these corporate entities. We do need to be respectful of their rights, and the city has limits to what it can and can't do with regard to the the ability to use property it doesn't own. But like I said, you know, that's, I, I get it, you know, that's a challenge. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't think we're going to be able to solve that here tonight. Y yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I'm going to uh, say what I have to say and I have to leave. Uh, okay. But um, whatever, if, if through the process you extend something to Lowell's, Extend it to the church as well, oh, you know, so everything will be across uh, uh, yeah, the board. Yeah, de most definitely. Okay, and then uh, secondly, um, 
what's the process after tonight? Uh, after tonight, you're going to take in consideration all the comments that you've had? Y yes, ma'am. Okay, so that what you showed is not the final? Negative. Okay, no, we, 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 we still, it's a, still a work in progress. Okay, so we'll, yeah. we'll see something uh, it, before if you, March If you 21st. put your name on the list back mm -hmm. there, then as soon as we get a workable draft, okay. um, we'll, we'll then we'll send it, we'll to, send it to everybody before it would go to the commission okay. and and also the city manager will weigh in on it okay. and um, so that's the point of all of this and you giving us your contact information okay. so we can keep everybody in the loop okay. and we won't have a situation where then we have the hearing with the commissioner and we have <laughs> I didn't know about this nobody told me you know that kind of thing we want everybody to be involved okay all right thank you very much it, this gentleman here, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, my name's Robert, and I own a food truck also. The whole thing with the, the Lowe's, the, the landowners or whatever, being that us little people, we can't get a hold of those people, what if the city, I was gonna say. what if the city did it for us? Well, I mean, we, I can't call the headquarters of Lowe's and get a response. It's not going to happen, okay, because we're nobody. But if the city of Deltona calls Lowe's or whoever else, big corporations, they will respect the city, and they may give you an answer, yes or no. Let me ask you a question. 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 Okay, if you go to corporate, yeah, they're not going to know. But that general manager running that parking lot gave all of us permission to be there. There's four trucks that go there through the week. They alternate so we don't crisscross having too many trucks in there and all that kinds of stuff. But the general manager will stand in your face and say, I give you permission, but I will not sign papers. So how, how do you dictate? What is how, his name? What is do you know his name? I think I read him down at home. We'll, we'll get his name, but here's the thing. What gives you the right authority over him? That's, it's not your property, it's Lowe's. He's a general manager in charge of the whole building and the whole parking lot. What gives you the authority to override his, what his, his word? We are. But all I'm asking for is that general manager can show me documentation. He's not going to write it. That's the thing. So let me, let me turn this table on this conversation. So you're telling me that the general manager that has the authority control the building and the parking lot. Yeah, that's his job. That's his job of the general manager to control everything. How do you have this job? It's like me. I'm the city manager. Okay. I have no authority to tell somebody that they can use a city property without the city commission's approval. Okay. So I'm like a property manager. You know, I have I just know, unless things change with him, when we first started going over there, he says, you can park there. I will not sign nothing. If there's any trouble, you have to leave. That's the way he operates with all the food trucks that go there. And there's four food trucks that you will put out of business because of that rule. Because there's two of them that go there five days a week. We go one day a week. And another one that goes, I don't know how many days, he's a new truck. But if you enforce that law, you'll put two trucks for sure out of business. That's their day, that's their, that is what they live on. 
<clears throat> so that, you have to go to that general manager and say, are these people allowed to be here? And if so, then that should be sufficient for the city. They're trying to protect you as well. They're trying to protect me as well. What happens if that manager leaves? Okay, then we gotta deal with it. We gotta find out if the other manager's gonna let us do there or not. But you'll be out of business until whatever you decide, right? If you have a letter from corporate, it doesn't matter how many times the manager leaves. You cover. Well, all, all what you have to do is find somebody, whether it's the city, whether it's yourself, whether it's a it's a food truck association. Maybe the food truck association can help you with corporate. They charge you to be a member of the association. The association Amy, but they help you. require us to do it. The city is. So the city should yes, be. Yes, but the association will help you get to all these legal terms. Do what? The association will help you to get to all the legal terms. The Delta so they can. Food truck association or what? No. It's a food truck. It's an association for food trucks and the state of Florida. A Florida eh? association? Yes. Yes. And they'll help you to get through all the legal terms. If you cover your base in there, it doesn't matter if they switch managers in Lowe's, if they switch in Win Dixie. If Win Dixie Corporation gives you the okay to be in there and the manager doesn't want you, you can bring the letter and say, corporately allow me to be here. And you cover. For my point of view, and I'm saying as a f food truck owner as well. Right. Well, I'm not debating the food truck thing. I'm just debating the, the part that they, they need that. that. They yes, honey. That, that part I get it as a food truck owner. If they come to where I'm standing, you know, and I'm there seven days a week. <laughs> I mean, I'm there. But in my, in my uh, how do I say? I mean, that's the spot that I wanted ever since before I started this. I was cutting grass and I keep saying, I want to be there. It took me two years to convince that gas owner to let me park in there. Every time I came, he would tell me no. Even when I got the truck, I opened in Deltona Boulevard because he kept saying no. It took me a long time to convince those people. So, but I actually put him as additional insurance. But well, that's what we have a million dollar policy. We'll get, I like what that guy Yeah, yeah, I mean, I believe we all do. To do that, and that should be sufficient because we cover everything. It's not Lowe's responsibility, it's ours. Yes, but exactly what they say. If something happens, they're going to come to Lowe's as well. It's not going to be just you. And this is reality. I used to be a pro legal, I know. And I say I used to be because I have been 20 years that I don't know for So. <laughs> If something happens to me and your food truck, yes, I'm going to sue you, but I'm also going to sue Lowe's because Lowe's allowed it to happen. Yeah. Lowe's let you stay there. Right. What if Lowe's comes and tells me, wait a minute, I didn't do that. You think the manager is going to come and say, oh, yes, I gave them permission? No, he's not. Would, would the manager from Lowe's will come and stand right here? Like she does with us, and I don't go to her church. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't go to her church, but she's here. Yeah, I also have an example. <laughs> Thank you. A year ago. I appreciate your insight. A year ago, I was in a dance auto. They had a split in their parking lot where, and I had regular shoes on, so no flip flops or anything. Going back to my truck. I slipped over that, I tripped and fell. And I have um, a concussion, broke my wrist, um, cheekbone, fractured cheekbone. I had to go to the hospital. Now here's what a lot of people don't understand. Advanced Auto, you would think that they would own that land. They don't. They rent that land. 
the insurance company from uh, Advanced Auto had to go back to the landowner <clears throat> and had to comply with them to see who was going to pay for my hospital bills and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so just because Lowe's says that you can go there, they may not own that land. And that's why he won't give you the letter. Because they don't want to take the responsibility because their landlord is not, or their, their land owner is not giving them or anybody in that shopping center the permission to do anything like that. So that's what you also got to look for, to see if they own that land because that will make it totally different because it was for me. And I mean, I was black and blue, and, but I didn't sue. I didn't sue them. They fixed it. <clears throat> they paid my bills. I was happy. But I could have gone to the food truck that I was there to talk to. I could have gone to Advance <clears throat> Auto, but I, and the landlord, because that was their property that was damaged that caused me to <laughs> fall. I did. I got my bills paid and I went on. So just check out to see if that's what the issue is of who is the actual land owner. Yeah, okay. One, one more comment. We, we, we're going to have to wrap up. We really appreciate you all coming out. That's what I was going to ask. Um, like, if we have a problem finding the landowners, are you, since you have all the blueprints and all the documents, are you guys able to tell us who owns a property? Like, for example, Little Caesars and La Casita. I was, I was having a hard time finding the owner. Way to go on the Volusia County property appraiser site. They have a map, and you can click on individual properties, and it will bring up the owner and their contact address. information. Yep. Well, then, I mean, that probably solved all the problems. Yep. That's the same choice we use. Yep. Yeah. Because um, I don't know if Lowe's owns that property. Yep. No, but I know I went to another location, and they said, you got to speak to the owner. I'm like, you don't own this? They said, no, we don't. They're renting. Yeah, that so. makes a difference. Thanks for coming out, folks. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you all can sign the sign-in sheet, and uh, we'll keep you notified of, of what we're working on here. Like I said, I really appreciate it.